class today we will try to understand one more topic if i am preparing an application using this android studio and now i want to generate an apk out of that that what we can do for that now the moment i go and i will run this application into this app directory build output you may observe that one apk file is by default prepared or what you can do is you can run your application and you can generate an apk out of that so if i go and see uh take an example this is my android studio so if i go and run this application this is the test location so let me go to this android projects then uh, there will be this okay uh, uh let us open anyone we go to this app then there will be this build and there will be output and output there will be this apk and into debug you may observe that this is the apk file which you are having so the moment i run this application okay we will be having that apart from that there is one more option that you can go and you can build a generated signed apk so if i go to my android studio there will be this build option and into build if i observe then this is like build apk and there is one more option that you can generate your signed apk file signed bundle or signed apk files so if i click on this it will generate an apk for me so now the situation is what that what uh, what would be the difference if i directly go to this run and if i say run app i'll be getting a apk file for this or if i go and uh, into this build and if i say generate sign bundle then again i'll be getting the apk file so what will be the primary difference over there so let us go and check you are supposed to sign your app so whenever uh we prepare an apk file it has to be digitally signed with a certificate before the uh, before this application you know install in our device or before we go for any kind of you know updations that is supposed to be provided so if you use your android app bundles you are supposed to sign it first so we prepare an apk we sign it and then we will be able to upload this application to google play console and uh, later on everything will be taken care by google play itself now there is a possibility that i can go ahead and i can manually sign my app and then later on i can upload it to the google play store or some other app stores which are available in the market so situation will be like what that export we are supposed to export our unsigned apk which means you will get unsigned apk that is not signed by any key store now when i say that unsigned apk has been generated it doesn't have any kind of signature by the key store so key store is what it is nothing but a binary file when i say key store actually that is my binary file which contains some private keys so there will be the private key which is generated by this android studio and later on that binary uh, those private keys are stored as a binary file and they are signed as a key store along with my app so later on that app can be uploaded to your google play app store if i do have a signed apk it means that it does have an existing key store within your unsigned apk you will not have your key store that is a primary difference so if i do not have a signed apk if my apk file that i have generated it doesn't have any key store which is associated to it then what will happen then your unsigned app will not be published over this google play store so uh, whenever user is installing your application into their devices they have to go to this settings security and they have to lower down their security check they have to lower the security levels uh, i hope you remember that whenever i am you know installing any apk file which is not available over the google play and i am you know taking from some other resources uh, take an example i have downloaded one apk from uh, you know uh, some random website and when i try to install it says that you have to check this box install from unknown sources so there will be a check box if i uh, if it is not uh, checked then what will happen that your security is at the highest level and you will not be able to install application outside of google play store so when you publish your app when you publish your app, when you prepare your apk files you are supposed to assign an uh, key store to this now uh, right now if i go and uh, click on this build there is one option generate 
sign bundle apk so i'll go to this i'll say apk now i click on this next when you do this it says that for which module you are doing you have to specify the keys to open. Uh, actually it says that over the desktop i am having a test key so if i go to this and if i show you this then there will be a test key uh, this is the primary key and what will happen that it will be a kind of a data which is not readily intelligible format so you will not be able to get anything out of that this is the private key which is generated and it is stored as a key over here so even if i open this one i will not be able to make any sense out of that so either you can choose existing or you can go ahead and you can create a new so let's say i am generating one more key and i have provided the uh, you know password to that admin at that one two three now that is the password for that key and now i'm providing another password that will be for my alias now i'm just giving this one and i can specify validity of this key store so it is like 25 years uh first and the last name for so what will happen actually these are my private keys and those private key will be uh, stored as a binary value and they are associated as a key store so it will be having a kind of a you know, certificate this is what a certificate assigned to this particular application so this is the kind of a key store that i am generating using this android studio which will be uh, mapped to an application so this certificate this key store that you are generating uh, to whom it is assigned so take an example i am going and saying uh, not i'll say suvas Okay, uh, that was an issue actually that key store uh, in this first parameter if you observe that it is key store path and the path was given to test key which means the key store that has been already generated this test key and i tried to modify it in the same uh, you know key store path and now it is saying that it has been you know tampered so i'm supposed to provide a new key store path that i have not given and then i tried to save it Okay, go to this, try to save it. If it is saving, then we will be able to generate one more key store. Now it is not working. It has gone to this. let us start our android studio again and we will see that uh, so this is the test key and uh, the unfortunate thing was that i haven't you know modified the name and within the same uh, you know key store i was trying to add some additional things and that was the issue that it says that uh, you can uh, your key store has been tempered or it has been modified and we should not do such thing now we are having this again let me close this now for this i'll go to this build and into build there will be generate sign bundle apk now i'll choose my apk i'll go to next and here i say i want to create a new and from this instead of test key we have to specify a uh, new key i'm giving you know a random name to this
okay it has again it has been Okay, there is uh, some issue right now that Android Studio is not responding, but uh, at least I can show you that this is the test key that we have generated. And uh, whenever you want to prepare and sign a PK, you are supposed to go to this build. And uh, into this build, you have this one option, generate signed PK. And this particular file will be uploaded over your app store. It doesn't make any sense that you should say Google Play Store because we have plenty of app stores which are available. So I will go to this build and then there will be this. <clears throat> and then there will be generated signed APK. So the moment you choose this, now I will not go for any creation of new, but uh, you are supposed to first of all create a new key store path and the moment you say next you will be getting this option that you want to generate this okay so we can do that now if i go and show you this the moment you do that within your app you will be having this build and here we have this output apk debug and here we have this particular things okay okay uh, just let it be a side of for one now after generating a signed apk now what you can do is that particular signed apk can be uploaded to an app store the moment we say that we are having an app store it doesn't mean that uh, we are talking about uh, this you know google play store only we can have some other options as well what we can do is we can have uh, some alternative of this google play store like app droid app toid one app market lg smart amazon apps these are the different app stores where you can upload it. Now, the moment I say Google Play Store, it is not the only option. Why? Because when you go to this China, they do not have this Google Play. Okay, so if uh, you are having a kind of an application where your market is like uh, Asia, Asia Pacific uh, countries, then there is a possibility that the China, which is you know, like a big market for your Android application, you are some, uh, completely missing it out. So what you can do is, uh, apart from Google Play Store, you can have App Droid, you can have Amazon App Store and other stuff where you can upload your applications. Okay, so how should I go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, publish an Android application? So there are several steps which have been listed. So step number one is create a developer account in your Google Play Console. So if I go and uh, say Play Console, and then you will be having this particular stuff google play console so the moment you say what you require is a google account so sign in with your google account there will be uh, something like you know developer agreement and then you have to go for this pay registration fee so i have chosen this one i have to accept this developer agreement uh, now it will be like uh, that i am you know above 18 plus uh, i'll uh, follow all the rules and regulations which are set up by the google like uh, I will not extract users data. I will not perform some malicious activity. So there will be some rules and regular uh, regulations which are set. But here comes a difficulty. We cannot have the demo of this because it requires my credit card where $25 is the registration charge. Definitely it is one time. But $25 is something that I have to pay to open a Google developer account over here. So if I want to publish an application, there will be one operational cost $25 that we have to pay. You just pay it once and then later on. How many applications you want to do uh, at any given time, if, if you want to publish any application, you are free. But uh, just for this you know, subject purpose, uh, I'm not sure that $25 is something that anyone will pay. Uh, if you are good with uh, uh, you know, Android and you want to become a, a kind of a freelance or if you want to you know, start your own company, then you can go ahead and prepare your Google Play console account, a developer account. But right now we are just going through this. That yes, I just go to this play.google console and into console. This is something that we have. So I have accepted my this developer agreement. And now the only thing is I have to just link my credit card. The moment I do this, my account will be 
ready and I will be able to publish my applications. Next. Step number two, after you prepare uh, your this developer account, the next thing is you have to go and provide description and the title of your application. Like we are having this contact manager. So I'll say that uh, name, the title of application is contact manager and the description, what this application will do. So based on the keywords, based on the title and the description that I have provided, I will be getting visibility in the search engine. Third thing is about adding the screenshot and uh, there is no more discussion needed in this. The moment I said that we require some screenshot, why? Because whenever we go and see, uh, take an example, let us go to this Google Play tree. Uh, you might uh, you might have observed that any application that you observe there will be title and there will be some screenshots so nowadays Google Play console also supports video as well so you can put a video or you can have some screenshots now this screenshot will give you a random idea to the end user that uh, what kind of facility will be provided by this application so you can do that later on you have to uh, provide the content writing so you will be giving some answers there will be some several questions which has been asked and based on the answer that you have provided there will be the content rating so why we are having this particular section to restrict kids from downloading your application if it contains some adult content or it is like some resistant con uh, uh, content or something like that so you are supposed to specify you know uh, the correct answer for that if you are having an application where you are having some violence you are having some uh, you know adult content and you have given the false fabricated information then your application will be removed from the play store as well as your account can be banned so step number one create your account step number two provide title and description of your application step number three provide the screenshots and if needed you can upload a video as well and then you will be having some questions so a questionnaire is supposed to be answered by you and uh, due to that you will be getting uh, content rating that whether this application is uh, for kids or not or something like that after doing this there will be a few more steps you are supposed to specify your app category step number six is you have to go for privacy policy upload your epic file and then you have to specify your cost so app category definitely i have to choose if i'm uploading this contact manager then this is what it is for education purpose it is for some utility it is for gaming it is for education for what so if i'm choosing my category in a correct way that i you know i'm kind of you know elevating my chances of more download if i have chosen a wrong category then people will not see take an example this uh, contact manager that we have started uh, in our previous session this is about kind of you know utilities so if I uploaded contact manager into the game category, then uh, the moment someone is you know, searching through games, this contact manager will appear over there, but it is for no use. So you have to select the correct category, then there will be regulation, the privacy policy that we are having. If your app need to use some private users data, you have to indicate it. So there will be this privacy policy agreement uh, take an example if uh, contact manager is the application which i'm uploading then i will be uploading i will be reading users contact data so i will be specifying that uh, this application will use the contact details from your mobile device but i will not upload it anywhere i will not misuse it so whatever private data that you are taking from users data you have to make sure you have to provide the guarantee that you will not use this data for your personal advantage okay uh, in privacy policy agreement you should explain to the users that what data will be collected and in what way this information will be processed and who will have access to that so i'll be saying that uh, this contact manager will read all your contacts i will collect that particular data uh, i'll be uh, so the moment you open this application there will be uh, kind of you know what i say uh, a permission request will be coming after you provide that permission it will be processed and only you will get information out of that okay that uh, this contact is coming to your location and now we are giving you the notification and some other stuff so we specify the privacy policy now we have to upload our apk file and as per our previous discussion that we have unsigned and we have signed apk here you have to indicate that it is beta version or not if it is beta version, then uh, you might uh, understand that uh, what's a beta, that this Prisma uh, beta and some other applications which are, you know, having this beta program. 
So beta means unstable version, which will not be available for everyone. So for your application, the users who have, you know, gone through this beta program, only those users will be able to have this APK uh, to be downloaded and installed. So you will be specifying whether beta or a stable version. And over here in uh, on an Android device, you can download and install only signed APK files. So if you are uploading any APK over this Google Play Store, you have to generate signed APK files that we have understood from this build and generate signed APK. Okay, so we have to do this. Uh, take an example in case uh, you lost the access to the key store. Right now, I have generated my key store that is available over the desk of this uh, test key. So if uh, I, I lost that particular file and I want to you know, generate it again, then there is nothing uh, that you have to do. Uh, what you will be doing is that in case you lost access to the key store, you have to publish your app with no, one more time you have to upload your application to the Google Play Store with a new package name and a new key. That's it. Which means uh, like, you know, I'm having an updated version and I'm not having an, uh, the previous key store. It doesn't make any sense. You have your updated, uh, updated APK file along with that. Uh, just prepare a new key store and re-upload to the Google Play Store and rest of the thing will be taken care by Google Play. Now, last. Step number eight, that is about adding the price. So if you want to sell your application, you can do that. There are plenty of applications which are available over the Google Play Store, which are uh, free. And there are a few of the applications uh, for which you have to pay something. So you can decide the cost, okay? Now, after you have uploaded uh, your application to the Google Play Store or the Amazon App Store or this App Broad or any other App Store successfully, now your task is over. Your application is being uh, downloaded and being used by the end users and you are good with that. But it will be a kind of, you know, uh, great news for you if your application is, you know, generating money for that. So you are supposed to have that, uh, you know, you uh, from this Google Play Store, you will be getting a comprehensive data about the income, users, conversion of your product that uh, this particular product is uploaded to this particular category how many downloads are being done, what kind of rating you are getting, what kind of revenue is being generated. So complete financial report as well, you will be getting for a specified period of the time as per your, uh, as per your requirement, it will be generated by Google Play only. But that is not enough for me. Apart from that, I have to generate one more thing that your app could be rejected and your account can be blocked at any given point of time. If you have not indicated that your content is you know having 18 percent secondly your app contains violence racism, sexist and disabled content so if you are having an application where you are having you know some uh, kind of uh, comments you are having some kind of pictorial representation which is you know uh, hurting the sentiment of some uh, people then there is a possibility that your application can be rejected or there is a possibility that your developer account has been blocked even though you have paid 25 dollars next thing is you have not regulated privacy policy, which means that I specified that my this contact manager will read contact and it will give you the output. But instead of that, my application is back channeling and all your contact detail has been read and it has been sent to my server. So if I'm not uh, aligned to the privacy policy policy, then there is a possibility that uh, my app has been rejected as well as my account is blocked. So you have to follow those eight steps that we have discussed. Apart from that, you have to understand that uh, whatever application that you have published, uh, it is you know always aligned with Google's policy. So if I am having this particular what I say uh, uh, signed FPK that has been uploaded with uh, any of this app store, now the thing is about generating revenue out of that. So there is a possible, <clears throat> there's a kind of a thing that uh, AdSense. So whenever I generate a website, uh, there is an AdSense. What, and what we'll be doing is we go to AdSense and we generate some uh, ad blocks out of that. So when I say ad blocks, there will be different kind of like, I can have a leaderboard, I can have 350 by 350 box, I can have uh, textual uh, advertisement, I can have pictorial representation and so many other uh, formats out. But then AdSense is limited 
with web. So over there, they will be giving you some JavaScript code and that JavaScript code will be having your publication ID into that. So the moment you install the JavaScript code in any of your sidebar or within your post or within your header or within your footer, you may observe that after a certain period of time, Google will start delivering. Google means your AdSense will start delivering advertisement. If I want to generate revenue from my uh, this Android applications, then uh, the Google itself, if we go and say add mob now this is the mobile advertisement company which is specially designed by google and it works for your applications so when i say google add mob uh, it will be giving you different kind of advertisements which you can integrate into your mobile applications So everywhere, every size, every category. So what kind of application you are having according, according to that? Actually, it is about, you know, customizing or, you know, providing the user defined, uh, you, sorry, not user defined, user specific, <coughs> sorry. It is about specifying user specific uh, advertisements. So if user, uh, your application is about, uh, you know, gaming and other stuff. So the moment uh, that application is being run, this Google ad map will provide you the advertisement, which is specific to this, uh, gaming and other stuff. If I'm having an application where I'm giving, uh, take an example, I'm having an application like Baiju for education purpose, then this, uh, every category means user, uh, customize. Uh, user specific uh, advertisement it will give ads into your mobile application which is always relevant to the users category and their preferences so what we will be doing is that i will be able to have this ad mob so uh, we require the android studio 3.2 and definitely we are running this five version minimum sdk is 16 and the compile sdk version will be 28 and what is recommended that you have to create a google ad mob account and register your app so over here within your google ad mob you have to just go ahead and sign in i'm already having my google account over there and i will be using that now after that ad mob uh, if I want to integrate AdMob into my applications, then I'm having a you know kind of a dependency. If you remember, then uh, when we have prepared that uh, basic arithmetic calculator, we require a jar file to be integrated. So what we did is we have downloaded that jar file from this uh, uh, objecthunter.net. It was placed uh, uh into your gradle's wrapper over here we have placed that jar file and then we have went to this gradle script and there was this build gradle module and here we have implemented that previously we have gone for the location that if i want to have google play services to be uh, integrated then what i require is i have to go to this uh i have to go to this uh, where do I have it uh, file and I have to go to the project structure and into my project structure here into the dependencies I'll be going and I'll be saying that yes I require a new dependency that is the library or the jar now we are going through the same thing again uh, and here we specify <coughs> we specify that I require one more dependency and that is add more so what we'll be doing is it will be like implementation com google uh, gms play if I show you, then it is like implementation com Google Android GMS and it is like play services location 16 version number 16. And this time it is like com Google Android GMS play services and 19.0.1. So this is about in uh, having a dependency which will be used to display advertisement in your applications. Okay. So first of all, you have to go to this. The moment you go and make any change into this Gradle file, this is your build Gradle module app. So the moment you go ahead and make any change into this, you have to sync your Gradle again. After doing this, you will be having one more task to finish. You have to go to your manifest file and you have to specify your app ID. The moment you go and prepare your account with this Google ad mob, actually you will be given a pub ID. That is your publication ID. Like, uh, when you go and prepare your AdSense, you will be given a publication ID. So the moment you install your JavaScript code anywhere in your website, there will be some advertisements which are displayed. Now the moment user click on that advertisement, user will be uh, redirected to take an example in my website. I am having a Flipkart's uh, advertisement and now user is clicking on that. So user will be redirected to the Flipkart. But within that JavaScript code, there was, there was a publication ID of mine, which was integrated. 
So in my Google AdSense account, there will be CTR, click to ratio, and there will be some impression and there will be number of clicks which has been done by the end users. So that particular click and that particular amount will be uh, con uh, considered for my publication ID. Now the same thing uh, will happen over here with Google Ad Mob. That what uh, what will happen that the moment you sign into your or you sign up for this Google Ad Mob, you will be given a pub ID and that pub ID is something that you have to integrate in your manifest file. So the moment you will be having uh, any of this. Uh, the moment you will be having uh, hello uh, so the moment you will be having some advertisements which are being displayed uh, into your application this publication ID which you will be specifying uh, let me show you this in your manifest application and now this is the metadata and into your metadata you say Android name and your application ID and Android value this will be C a pub and now this exercise is something that you observe that is your uh, publication ID provided by your Add mob. So you have to include this value in your manifest file. And now, whenever your application has been opened anywhere, what will happen? There will be so many advertisements which are displayed. But uh, the situation will be like uh, uh, the moment any uh, person is clicking on uh, any of this advertisement which has been displayed in your Android application, this pub ID will be sent. Actually, user will be opening the flip card only, but this publication ID will be sent back to Google Add mob. So Google Admo will be able to understand that how many click has been done over the advertisement advertisement which has been displayed into this contact manager which has been published by this SUAS. So there will be you know uh, having a kind of a track that how many times uh, uh, this advertisement has been displayed and how many click has been done. Now when we go for this AdSense and Admo, we have several kind of you know ratios uh, like this is. Uh, CPM and CPC. CPC means click uh, cost per click, and uh, CPC this is about you know cost uh, kind of revenue that you are generating for CPM. That is cost per uh, million. Uh, that is about impressions. That how many times this advertisement has been displayed. Take an example in my application in my website. Users are not clicking on the advertisement, but uh, that advertisement has been you know displayed thousands of times. Even though I will get paid because that advertisement has been displayed. And my end user has seen it, even though it has not been clicked. That's fine, but there will be some CPM. So within CPM, it will be like uh, if advertisement has been displayed in my uh, Android application several times, I will be getting some amount of uh, some amount for that. And definitely, CPM uh, revenue will be always lesser than this CPC. So it is always suggested that uh, you will be having uh, you know the number of uh, clicks uh, rather than having number of uh, impressions. So if I go further and uh, see after uh, generating your AdMob, uh, first generate your AdMob account. Next, go to your uh, this uh, Gradle build and uh, provide this implementation. And we have seen that either I can directly go to this build Gradle and I can start writing over here, or I can go to this file and I can go to project structure and from project structure, uh, project structure dependency and I can add a library dependency. There are two options. After doing this, we will be going to this uh, Android manifest file and into my this into this application. I'll be going and I'll be specifying I'll be specifying my metadata. That metadata will include two things: Android name, that is the application name and the application ID. Sorry, and the value will be your pub ID. The moment you generate this, uh, you are supposed to initialize your mobile ad SDK. You are having this uh, mobile SDK that is available. The moment I say that. Uh, this is the dependency. Then I say this is the uh, mob ID and this is the application ID. Now, uh, mobile ads dot initialize. This is something that I have to do. So let me show you this. Uh, the moment you have uh, this particular what I say uh, your controller. Now into your controller, uh, you have to import these two things: uh, com, Google, Android, GMS ads, mobile ads. And another thing is initialization. So the moment I say mobile ads and initialization. By having this uh, this uh, dependency that we have included into uh, Gradle, uh, this mobile ad uh, SDK is now uh, initialized and uh, sorry that has been imported and into your own create. I'll be having this mobile ads dot initialize. So the moment you say mobile ads dot initialize uh, within a maximum period of sixty seconds, you will be able to see that yes, now I am having advertisements in my applications. But wait. This is about having the mobile ads initialization. We haven't placed our advertisements anywhere. 
this particular line that you observe mobilites initialization this is the context and then you are saying on initialization complete listener so like we are having click listeners we are having cancel listeners the same way we are having this on initialization complete listener so this complete listener will at the time of initialization it will generate it will you know uh, make your ad mob account available to you and you will be able to generate different kind of advertisements so we will be importing this and you are supposed to call this matter only right now i'm not going for any kind of demo because i don't have any ad mob account and i don't have any google play account right now so we are just going through the information that what we should do and how we will be doing it now if my uh, dependency is added, if my manifest file is added, if I'm having Google AdMob account available to me, and if my mobile SDK is initialized, now I have to understand that we have different kind of ad formats. Okay. So uh, you have to select an ad format and you have to place that where I exactly wish. So there will be this uh, banner format, and uh, this is the most common ad format that you have seen. Now, banners are like uh, 728 by 80 that is the leaderboard but when i talk about 728 pixel it is generally used in your website so when i go for this mobile application admo will be having limited the size so this banner ad is a kind of a rectangular a rectangular ad that will appear generally at the top or at the bottom of the device screen and uh, this banner ad will always stay on the screen while user is interacting with your application so banner ad is uh, kind of a thing which you should have because <clears throat> if this is my mobile screen i can have this banner ad at the bottom probably you might have seen in uh, times of india or some other uh, you know applications you are always having the complete screen and from this top to bottom you are having the data that is coming from your application but this banner ad will always stick to the bottom and however you move this banner will always be there so uh, there is this banner ad format next is interstitial now this is a full screen ad so if you are having a kind of you know a post to a post to an application you can have this interstitial or you are having you know like a user is playing a game so level one is over and now you have to shift to the level two so you can display this interstitial ad now third one is the native ad now when i say native ad it will be having the complete look and feel like your application so user will not be able to distinguish that whether this is an application data or this is an advertisement and last thing is rewarded so user is supposed to go through some short video or they have to go for some uh, you know interaction they will do some interaction like a survey they have to go for some playful ads and you will get money monetized for that so either you can have banner ad you can have interstitial which will be taking the full screen or you can have native ad which will take up the complete look and feel like your application or you can have some rewarded where you will be watching some short video and you will get paid for that and your task is done okay so go to uh, this google ad mob and just check banner interstitial native and this rewarded kind of facilities so these are the different kind of ads that you can incorporate within your this ad mob account <clears throat> and later on you can integrate those advertisement in your android applications okay okay class so this is about your last module module number five that how can i publish an android application so previous we have seen that how to publish an application then we have seen what is signed and unsigned apk what is key store then we have seen that how your account can be rejected we have seen that what is admob and how to integrate by having its dependency its manifest file and other stuffs and we have seen different kind of ad formats this particular section uh, does not have you know more weightage with respect to your